Let's do some calls of the day now. Number one, Nike initiated outperform Evercore ISI. Price target 124. Jimmy, you bought this recently. It's a um, it's it's a great company. I mean, I don't think we're going to dispute the quality of the brand. It went through a tough couple of years here, and the two things that held it back are in the process of being corrected. One is China demand slowly coming back. The other is margins that were held back because of inventory, which has been re uh, destocked and is continuing to destock. Now, here's the thing: they had one good quarter. It reported about two months ago. I bought it right after that. When you have these turnarounds for a high quality, it actually takes two or three good reports quarters in a row. So here's my point on this. I bought it at around $93.5. I'm happy with the results that it's had so far, but I'm not going to add to it right here. I think there's going to be a holding pattern here for at least another couple of months until the next earnings report. If that one is positive, that will propel it to that $124 target. Bottom line, there's no rush. Weiss. Look, what it, about is, Nike? It, it is a quality company. You say there is more competition, although I don't know that's really hurting because their business is so big. Coming from on cloud, come from Hoka, the point is, is the markets are open to new brands. Yeah. As I said, I don't know that's happening. But again, I don't think Nike's losing much market share. No, no, no. Yeah. I said because of the scale of Nike's brand, I'm not sure that it's hurting them. But, but what I would say is that it's a consumer brand and that I don't know that you have to be in consumer stocks right now. So I do think that's continued to tread water, and now's not the time to initiate positions, because I do believe there could be further downside to their earnings. Jim, you want to retort that? I, I can't, because we're kind of in agree. I mean, look, we disagree on the overall macro thesis. He's negative on the consumer because he sees a recession coming. I disagree. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to no, compromise. No, but that's why, Weiss, maybe you wouldn't buy it at 131, which is the 52-week right. high, but when it gets down to uh, 108, I just don't think I have to own it. I, don't I think, think I, it's, you don't it's, have to own anything. It, no, no. But I, but when I look at, I want to own some stocks, right? So what am I not? If I want to keep my cash as it is, if I want to keep my treasury positions as they are, why would I guess on the recovery there and an economic recovery that's opposite of what I believe with the consumer? When I could buy more Microsoft, when I can buy more Meta, when I could go out and look at other tech stocks that I think will be, again, recession resistant. This will not be. Okay, so speak of consumer related stocks, you know, recession resistant or not. Home Depot and Lowe's, Jason, initiated sector perform today at RBC. They have earnings coming up, respectively, in the next few weeks, Home Depot yep. on the 14th, Lowe's on the, on the 21st, you own Lowe's. Yeah, so <clears throat> clearly Lowe's, it's been a struggle over the last three months. I mean, the stock's down around 13%, um, down around 2% year to date. Part of it is the divestiture from Canada. I mean, sales were down 9% in the last quarter. Um, you know, when I, when I look at Lowe's and some of these home improvement stocks, one, you know, the reason I like Lowe's over Home Depot, I think they have, they have growth opportunity in the pro segment, which they have been doing. Operational margins are growing in the 13 to 4 percent, 13 to 14 percent space. Um, so that's that's why I hold it, you know. But it but it obviously has underperformed recently. So we'll we'll see how the how the quarter performs. Um, but but I think it's a hold for us going forward. I mean, Home Depot and Lowe's estimates were both cut at Barclays. Um, Depot estimates were cut at Telsey. That concern you at all? It does. Price target on Lowe's cut to 207 from 212. It does. I mean, and, and the other piece that, that I think has obviously played into the price action is some of the deflation in lumber, right? So obviously that's also played, in, played into the price action of the stock. But when I, when I think about just broadly where rates are, there's not a lot of movement in the housing market, right? So no one's recycling an 8%, a 2% rate for an 8% rate. So there is opportunity to kind of resurface, rebuild, and a lot of that has happened through the pandemic, but I still think there's runway there. Jimmy, quickly, because you sold Home Depot. Yeah, I just can't get excited about it. I mean, I'm not saying that you're wrong, and I'm mm -hmm. not putting a bear case on there, just with mortgage rates at 8%, it's yep. hard to see the stock outperforming, the multiple's still a high teens. Look, I don't think you're going to lose money, I just think it's dead money, so I want to put my money elsewhere. That's not a bear case to call some Think dead money? <laughs> I don't think. I, <laughs> That's now, I don't have case. a bear case to make, but mortgage rates are eight percent, and I think it's no, dead money. Look, but hey, dead money. No bear case would to be. You. Bear case would be. I think it's Good going luck. down ten percent. I don't think my word choice was poor. If I thought it was going down ten percent, I'd take Jason. I'd grab him by the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. He's a strong guy. I shouldn't do that. Don't own Home Depot. I'm not saying that. It's a great yeah, yeah. long-term hold, but for the next quarter or two or three, I just can't get excited. All right. Well, you yeah. voted with your wallet. I mean. Yes, That's I what did. Counts more than anything. Yes, I did. You sold it. <laughs>